name is Violet. <laughs> it's not a name I ever wanted. It's not a name that any beauty ever had. I hearing it called through bars or playgrounds or hospitals. I'm not reminded of the flower. I avoid my name, as a matter of fact, whenever I can with any other name. <clears throat> Even the most ridiculous diminutives are pleasanter to my ears. <laughs> but if only he'd return, what blessed boredom it would be to hear my name pronounced with the right degree of propriety. I'm afraid the girl will not be entirely satisfactory. When the poet talked to me, the violet we knew was not like this. Her wit seems to have been dried or dull. <laughs> we look for abundance of feeling to counteract the sterility of war. She is a woman, after all. My girl, you cannot simply stand and wait. Your Jack, when he comes home, will have enough to bear without this black fatigue you seem to be in all the time. <laughs> I know. Perhaps if I thought deliberately of time before the war. Yes, that might help. <laughs> then everything seemed younger somehow, and the world dressed up too much. I always favored a party dress, always in those days, with net stockings and a bright bangle in my slick, straight hair. <laughs> I never used to lie, either. I was a real joke among my friends for being so anxiously stupid about the truth. <laughs> Life went by so fast then, was a great deal of laughter, and you didn't dare to lie, because the next moment was upon you with a fast and confounding surprise. That's why I had so many dresses. Everything was a special event, and the most unusual found me eager and waiting. Oh, I used to go through all my dresses every night before dinner, so that Jack never knew whether dish or violet with a greater surprise. <laughs> I used to sing annoyingly in his ear all the time because I invariably felt stark naked. My dear, I hadn't meant you to go on so. Please don't feel bad. It's all right. <laughs> I don't know how I feel. Except that I'm never naked anymore. <laughs> you know how it is when the music stops? I spent the war dancing. I'm just tired. <laughs> oh, Violet, at no time has the poet or myself touched or questioned your generosity or need. How could I have presumed to criticize you? I remember you in the bars and the cafes with your dirty face and shabby hose smiling and singing so cleverly, just as if you were happy. And I know you didn't always get the biggest sailor in the fleet. <laughs> Don't go on. It isn't fun to be understood when you didn't know you had to be. How else could I make myself feel real in that dazzled time? I only tried to be felicitous. <laughs> when the lights are up, I've got to kick and shout or go blind. I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm the sort of girl that sings in the movies along with a heroine or disappears altogether until intermission. It's not easy to be a spectator or audience always overruled by someone else's idea of what you really want. <laughs> Violet, you're never asked what news you want to see in the paper. When will he, Jack, come home? 
as if waiting for someone besides me to ask that question had delayed him. Now he appears, limping slowly up the walk. And after all these years of sorting my feelings and piling them around the kitchen, ready, classified, and clean, I don't know what I feel. I wish I had more time to decide. Oh, why did I say that? I'm crying. Hmm. Jack created this emptiness by his departure. You cannot fill, Violet, the cupboard where the <laughs> colander hung dry, the plane of linoleum the stove once stabilized, the empty shelves and racks were closed, and pots and dishes, the window void even of a view, not with the most appropriate sentiments. Does Jack know what he has done here? I don't know. I don't know. Be still. <laughs> moment of silence, the expected lyricism begins, as when the subway stops a minute just before reaching a station. They breathe heavily for a moment, all of a moment, though very sure of the time, his hand on her lips, her eyes stirring. They allow the world this minute to speak before taking up their love again, and softly as a gift, the world tells them what images they make, how it spies upon them every night, what their death will be, and how magical they are. Oh, Jack, my Jackson, why did you leave me? Since you've left, I had to sell the flute and the bathtub. <laughs> and my voice is broken. I'll never again be able to sing you Trail of the Lonesome Pine. <laughs> and Jack, I'm glad you're back. Just don't look at my fingernails. <laughs> I've come a long way for your sake. My back all decorated like this and my feet covered with mold. You know why they put fire under my lips? <clears throat> when we first went riding, how like dashing Cossacks. It was easy then to dress in scarlet. I sat my mouth prettily and hacked babies and old women with a song on my breath. I even let my eyebrows grow. But the cool rain <laughs> And with the gold braid and all, I frightened myself. There were sweet times, and we weren't too drunk to appreciate them. Lovely ladies loved us like useful flowers. And as I say, my color was good. <laughs> I had a beautiful horse. Why, I thought of myself as Eric's son, Leaf, going towards the moon with a world behind me and a lot of blood to get off my chest. I wanted to bellow the green and black waves flat and then cleave my way like an iceberg. I knew I was good. I hadn't laid them all low for nothing. Women and villages, coasts of islands twice as big as Iceland. And didn't they all squat when I frowned, even my bad old father? <laughs> but something went wrong. One minute I was lord of all I surveyed, and the next I knew that I'd be beaten. That I'd better go back to my easy throne and leave this virgin land I'd first laid heavy hands upon. That was a retreat. How I cried to shove off from that rich, tough land, my kind of country, and go home. What was it that beat me? The land, the air, the sun, all bigger than the gods intended me to own? I yearned after it, and it grew like a spiral as I thought through the years of my Vinland the Good. Or I was the admiral, bossing a bothersome crew and pretending a good deal of confidence when suddenly there was a hint of glory. I didn't believe it just because the seaweed looked like fresh grass. I knew I might be feverish and I didn't plan to be taken in, but there was something in the air, a sweetness like finding a ruby when you were looking for a baseball. And at the same time, I was sick at not knowing. It was mine and I hadn't planned for it. I wasn't strong enough, and anyone could knock me down, all those others who wanted everything as much as I did. So I spent most of my time wondering when bullets, mortars, and bombs were going to find out where my courage ended and this cowardice, oh, intuition, I'm not on trial, am I, began. Finally, a sniper in a tree on the edge of the Pacific's exciting waters, an oriental with lots of time for meditation, saw me clearly at the right moment. 
was time, you see, not topographical like Achilles' heel. I was thinking of myself as heir to the Mississippi. My thoughts turned to DeSoto. Whose wouldn't? <laughs> That's when I was spotted, naked as the beach, caught thinking of poor DeSoto within a few feet of safety. <clears throat> Had the war started for me to kill or be killed? I don't know. I did feel that something had been completed. You think you know what that means? Perhaps you do. I think I do. For God's sake, Jack, that's no way to talk. <laughs> Impulsive and never friendly. Willing Violet, nothing but their shoes. Your wife, after all. Children weighed on the receding shingle, gaunt in their practiced grace, mature. They ate their elders and cavort like pogo sticks on the advancing foam. <laughs> Where well-mannered aeroplanes and autos serenely sail on the yellow sands, children ignore their own innocence. They've taken it all in, and they know how they want their backs broken. So that's it? Well, why didn't you do something about it while I was away? Surely you weren't just thinking of my idea of Columbus to make sleep real. I would like to fill a jungle with elephants and gorillas and boa constrictors. I would like to fill all the trees and waterfalls with the blackness in me so I might be a bird of paradise. It would be fun to break a bottle of wine and have it turn to water, or to shoot a clay pigeon and have it go honk, honk, and lay an egg in the marshes. <laughs> I'd rather not be a wedding guest. If I were the Sphinx, I'd lie in the sun and stare at myself with pure white eyes. When I smiled, airplanes would go off their courses. <laughs> I'd hold down the dark and say sweet nothings to the palms. Oh, that's what we'd all do, Violet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we never have a chance. <laughs> oh, did the poet know this would happen when he dragged us into this? A friend of mine? Stop it. It's not the poet's fault. I was the one who went away. Then I had Violet's love, always at first, like a charm. But you can't carry memory everywhere. It's heavy. It hurts. Violet, I left your love in barracks and hotels as well as battlefields. I'm sorry. Your anger beats out in your most repose, and my bitterness varies every I love you. We go together, like hand organ and monkey, or bull's head and diadem, and fear each other's death. <clears throat> Oh, Jack, this is when married people try to be beautiful. <laughs> it's not enough if you're back, if nothing has changed. Now I remember how the poet feels about knowing that it is better and in itself enough. No nothing prevents life from returning at this point like a scandal, and everything you do will make a noise. Violet, you'll keep on grubbing in the laundry basket, always hoping to be surprised by something lovely and disturbing, like a crystal hand emerging with a sparkler. And Jack, you'll make her weep because she'll have to dance alone and do the wing ding in the dark when you're asleep beside the sink. Can you two look at each other and forget anything? Nothing has changed. Be wise. Forget that the kitchen is full of knives. Thank <laughs> you.